Good morning guys, welcome back to Triple L Rustic Designs. In today's video, we're gonna show you a little behind the scenes on how we make and dry firewood here at our shop. As you've seen in all of our videos, we recently got that Brute Force 1424 firewood processor and it makes a full IBC tote of firewood in about 10 to 15 minutes. After we make those totes of firewood, we load them into our lumber kiln. This kiln is a Nile L200 Pro 20 foot container lumber kiln. It is a dehumidification kiln, and technically it's not designed for drying firewood, but it does a wonderful job. This kiln is more designed for drying slabs and lumber, but we do use it regularly to dry our firewood. Surprisingly enough, it only takes about a week in the kiln for the firewood to go from fresh split down to dry enough that we can sell it as kiln dried firewood. If you guys are interested in learning more about this Nile L200 Pro container kiln, I encourage you to look back in our videos You'll see a couple videos like where the kiln was delivered, where we showed you how the kiln worked, where I walked around the kiln and explained everything inside of it. Today, I'm only gonna be talking to you about the firewood drying process. So this morning, we're swapping out the four bins of firewood that have been in the kiln for about five days. We've found that with this Nile L200 Pro container kiln, it takes about five to seven days to dry the firewood from being fresh split down to perfectly dry. One of the ways that we can tell the firewood is dry is by using our Delmhorst JX30 moisture meter. This moisture meter is pretty awesome because it has these two inch pins that you drive into the wood so it gives you an accurate reading of the moisture content deep inside the wood. As you've seen in some of our other videos, we do use another moisture meter here. That one's great for boards or lumber, but when it comes down to like thick slabs or firewood, this Delmhorst JX30 is the perfect thing. So like I said, the four totes of firewood have been in here for about five days. Before they went in there, they were fresh split on the splitter. They sat around for maybe one day and then they went straight into the kiln. So I'm gonna pull one of these totes out and I'm gonna show you how this tester tells us the moisture content of the wood. So these are the IBC totes that you see in all of our firewood splitting videos. We split the firewood straight into the tote and we stack them up. And whenever the kiln opens up availability, we stack four of them on the track, slide them into the kiln and fire it up. So in this tote, we have a load of red oak. There may be a little bit of live oak in here, but the majority of it is red oak. It's been in there for five days. So I'm gonna grab a piece. I'm gonna test it with the Delmhorst horse tester and show you what its moisture content is. All right, so with this moisture meter, you've got the, the reader, which this JX30 model is the top of the line, the newest model, it's super smart. It's got like Bluetooth technology. It can relate to your phone and you can track everything on the app. It's really, really nice. And then you've got this drive pin here. Basically, it's like a hammer pin. So this slides back and forth and it drives those pins into the wood. So on the meter, you go in, you select your species. There's a whole list of species. Pretty much every piece of wood that we mess with is in this reader. I'm gonna select red oak, and then I'm gonna set my moisture meter off to the side, and I'm gonna take the hammer slide here, and I'm gonna pound those pins into the wood. It's a little hard the way I'm holding it, but. Okay, so now that that's driven into the wood, it tells me the moisture content. And this piece of wood being in there for five days is at 12.2 moisture content. So in five days, this Nile L200 Pro took all this firewood from being fresh split, we're talking 40, 50% moisture content, fresh split and dried it down to 12% in five days. So one of the things that we've been struggling with is everybody who comes out here and finds out that we have a kiln they want us to kiln dry slabs. They want us to kiln dry their lumber. And we have to explain to them, one, it's firewood season. So for the last three to four months and for the next two months, everything going in and out of this kiln is firewood because as fast as we can dry this firewood is as fast as we can sell it. We can't keep it stocked up fast enough for the amount of people that are buying it. And it's crazy because we're here in Florida and you wouldn't expect people to be buying firewood the way they are but I guess bonfires are a huge thing down here and people want this firewood like crazy. We've got oak and we also have pine firewood. You guys have been roasting us on Facebook and on YouTube about the pine firewood. Listen, 
pine firewood is dedicated for bonfires in the backyard. We tell every customer that comes here, this is not meant to go in a chimney in your fireplace. This is just for bonfires in the backyard. And 99% of our customers are buying firewood for their bonfires in their backyard. So a lot of you won't watch this part and you won't remember that and you'll just continue roasting us about making pine firewood, but that's the reason behind it. So now that we know that all this firewood is dried down to 12%, we're gonna get the totes out of the kiln. We're gonna get four totes loaded into the kiln. I'm gonna show you using the Delmhorst JX30 moisture meter what their percentage is. I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere between 40 to 50% because it's brand new, fresh split firewood. We're gonna get it loaded into the kiln, start the kiln, lock it up, and in five days, we'll come back and we'll have some more 12% dried firewood. As you can see, I've got two full-size cypress logs inside the kiln with the firewood. These are for a customer who's making a man cave and wants some live cypress logs full-size inside his man cave. I just tested those. They're down to about 30%, so they need about another week in the kiln, and hopefully those will be done. As you can see, I also had some camphor cookies inside the kiln with the firewood. They weren't on the exact drying schedule that they should have been, but what we've noticed is that the camphor does a pretty good job drying. It doesn't crack too much or move too much like the oak does. So we're able to put these camphor cookies in here and start to dry them down so that we can use them for projects. It really sucks tying up the kiln for five months at a time drying firewood when we have all kinds of lumber and slabs that we need to be drying it makes me think we need a second kiln so here comes dad with the brand new fresh tote of split firewood looks like there's a good majority of red oak and live oak inside this tote So dad just brought over a fresh tote of firewood. Like I said, we're gonna show you how the Delm Horse tests it and see what that initial moisture content is. Just grab a small piece off the top here. So we've got our setting on red oak. We're gonna drive our pins in. All right, so as you saw, after five days in the kiln, we were at 12.2%. Right now, this fresh firewood is at 40.2%. So in five days, this kiln's able to dry this stuff down to perfectly dry to where we can sell it as kiln dried firewood. Just to show you guys, I'll grab one more piece. And like, here's a little tiny piece. Let's test this one. So we're looking at 45% on this one. So this stuff is very, very fresh. It was just split yesterday. No need to let it air dry. Just throw it right in the kiln and let the kiln do the work. If you guys do any kind of woodworking whatsoever, I highly recommend you get a good moisture meter like this Delmhorst JX30. If you're interested in seeing all the specs and details about the JX30, I will have a link in the description below where you can check it out and check out all the incredible products that Delmhorst has to offer. Delmhorst, thank you guys very much for sending us over this moisture meter. Whether it's testing thick slabs or testing this firewood, we couldn't do it without this moisture meter, so thank you guys very much. So this is the first of four totes going into the kiln. I'm gonna push it in there. Dad's gonna grab three more. 
We'll get the kiln wrapped up and show you how we start it. As you can see, the track system works awesome. This part out here looks a little crazy. Sooner or later, we're gonna make a more permanent solution, but right now we're able to take these rails, put them onto the rails inside of the, the kiln, and then we can roll the carts in and out. And then whenever we're done, we just move the rails out of the way, close the doors, and we're good to go. Down here in Florida, people often call us and ask, what's your price per cord for firewood? Here at Triple L Rustic Designs, we don't sell the firewood by the cord, we sell it by these totes. So if you do end up coming and buying a full tote of this kiln dried oak firewood, we sell that for $100. From what we figured out is about three of these totes equals about one cord of wood. So for those of you wondering how it works, how does the kiln dry the firewood? Typically with this dehumidification kiln, you've got the compressor unit over here. It creates the heat, it pushes the heat up. This whole row of fans up here takes that heat and that air, pushes it that way, it hits the wall, it goes down this baffle system. This gets lowered down, so it goes down that baffle system, hits the wall, and then comes through the wood and when it comes through the wood, the compressor sucks all the moisture in that air out through the wood, compresses the water, pumps it outside the kiln, and just continues that cycle over and over. Well, with the firewood, the air can't move through the firewood bins. So the way this kiln is designed it doesn't really work for the firewood, but there is another way that it dries the firewood. So with this kiln, you're able to turn the heat up really hot if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure it can go up to about 170, 180 degrees. However, we never go above 130 degrees Fahrenheit. We found that the compressor will turn itself off somewhere between 130 to 132 degrees Fahrenheit. And we need that compressor to run so that it can suck all the moisture that's coming out of this firewood and pump it outside the kiln. So even though this kiln is designed to push that hot air down and through the wood, it still works in drying the firewood because it basically turns this 20 foot container into an oven at 130 degrees, just baking this wood, which creates a lot of moisture inside. Sometimes we open up these doors to check on something and it is like a crazy sauna. It's just steam pouring out of here because when this wood is cooking at 130 degrees, it's just filling this kiln full of moisture and then that compressor is taking all that moisture and pumping it outside the kiln. On this Nile L200 Pro unit, it has another mode called hybrid mode. In that mode, it uses the vents on the side of the kiln and it pumps the moisture out through those vents constantly. At the same time, it's using the compressor to suck that moisture into the compressor and pump it outside of the kiln. So it's like a dual action where it's pushing moisture out the vents, it's sucking moisture out through the compressor, and it's drying that firewood even faster. When we start the firewood drying process, for the first couple days, we put it in that hybrid mode because as it starts to heat up to that 130 degrees, it fills this kiln full of so much moisture, sometimes the compressor can't keep up. So by putting it in the hybrid mode, it's able to send half that moisture out the vents and send the other half through the compressor 
and into a bucket on the back of the kiln. After a couple days in hybrid mode and once some of that moisture has started to get out of the kiln, then we can switch it over to dehumidification mode. And in dehumidification mode, all it does is use the compressor to take the moisture in the air inside the kiln and pump it out to the back of the kiln into a bucket in the form of water. So to recap everything in simpler terms, we load in the fresh totes of firewood, we dry them on hybrid mode for about two to three days, then we switch over to dehumidification mode, finish the drying cycle for about another two to three days, and in that five to six days, we take that fresh firewood that was testing 40 to 50% and take it down to 12% to 15% where we can sell it as kiln dried firewood. So we've got our four totes loaded into the kiln. I'm gonna get these camphor cookies put back into place. We'll get the doors wrapped up and then I'll show you how we start it. Now drying firewood at 130 degrees Fahrenheit is definitely not the same or the correct drying cycle that these camphor need to be dried at. However, camphor is pretty forgiving. So we just dry these cookies at the same rate that we're drying the firewood. It does cause some cracking as you can see, but all of these cookies are pretty much gonna be epoxy projects. So we don't care if it causes some cracking or some voids because we're just gonna fill them in the end anyways. We found that we can dry these camphor cookies at two and a half to three inches thick in about 10 days. So two cycles inside the firewood kiln. Dad's gonna lower down the baffle system. So generally when we put in slabs or lumber, this baffle system helps by channeling the air down and against the wall and then through the wood. It does the same thing for the firewood, but the air just doesn't really move through the wood because it's so dense the way it's stacked. However, it does still help by pushing all the air that way and then it works itself kind of through the wood and back into the compressor. So this is the struggle part is pulling these heavy 20 foot pieces of angle iron out of the way so that we can get the doors closed. Now that those are out of the way, dad's able to shut the door and get everything locked down. We've had this kiln from Nile for about a year now, and this thing has been a game changer for our shop. If you guys do anything in the woodworking industry, whether it's firewood or slabs or lumber, or anything with fresh lumber, you've definitely got to get yourself a kiln from Nile. It will take your production to the next level. Being able to kiln dry your firewood or kiln dry your slabs and your lumber, it's really, really awesome. For example, all of the pine that we cut down here, the southern yellow pine, we're able to take it fresh, put it in this kiln, and dry it down to 10% in about three days. Here on the back of the kiln, we have the L200 Pro computer module or the unit. Um, it's inside this nice weather type box. And then over here on the side of the kiln, we've got this tube that comes out from the compressor and it runs down across the ground here and we did have it going into a bucket so we could like see how much water and moisture was coming out of the kiln, but now we just have it going into the hole, but it works pretty well. And once the kiln gets up to 130 degrees, this thing is a steady stream of water pouring into this hole. So it's gonna be hard to see this morning because the sun is beaming down on this unit, but dad's gonna go in there to the unit and he's gonna change it to hybrid mode. And on hybrid mode, our settings are 125 dry bulb and 75 vent. So what that means is that it's gonna take the heat inside the kiln up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit and anything over 75 wet bulb, so like the moisture content, which gets really, really high, if it's over 75, it will open the vents on the side of the kiln and it will pump the moisture outside of the vents. Here's one of the vents on the back of the kiln that one is controlled electronically. So when it reaches over 75 wet bulb, this vent opens up and it pumps all the moisture out. The vent on the front of the kiln is not electronic. It's just a manual vent. So it works when the kiln's on, it basically opens itself up a little bit and pumps out some moisture and works the same way. 
So now that dad's set the kiln to hybrid mode and our settings are good to go, I can show you right now the dry bulb is at 63 and the wet bulb is at 50. That's because it's got kind of cold last night. So it's gonna take longer to get this dry bulb up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit inside the kiln. But the doors are shut. Dad's gonna start the kiln. He's gonna hit the start button. It's gonna ask and make sure everything is closed. And there we go. So the kiln's fired up. And like I said, in about two to three days, we'll come back, we'll check the moisture content, and it'll be a lot less than what it's gonna be over the next day or two. And we'll switch it to DH mode and this firewood will come out in about five days. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the behind the scenes on how we dry firewood in our Nile L200 Pro container kiln. If you guys are interested in finding out any information about the Nile kilns, I highly encourage you head over to the link in the description below. Nile makes all kinds of products from giant industrial sized kilns to small little kilns. They even sell just the unit where you can build your own kiln. If you're not interested in building your own kiln and you just wanna buy one outright, I highly encourage you to check out the Nile L200 Pro 20 foot container kiln. That's what we're using here. It works awesome and you won't be disappointed. Once again, Delmhorst, thank you guys so much for sending us over this JX30 moisture meter. This thing's been a game changer for our shop and we use it every day when it comes to drying lumber here at Triple L Rustic Designs. If you guys have any questions about anything you saw in this video today or have any questions about the firewood drying process, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. Just so you know, we are not wood drying experts or professionals. Everything that we have learned has been from Nile, from our experiments here at the shop, or from Nathan at Out of the Woods Forestry. If you guys don't follow Nathan, search Out of the Woods Forestry on YouTube, head over and check him out. He's got a Nile kiln himself, he's got a sawmill, and we've learned a lot from him. If you guys like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss all of our future videos, and we'll see you on the next one.